Welcome to worship with the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. My name is Reverend Jennifer Innes, and it is my great joy to serve as the minister with this congregation, as we all, all who gather, all who are part, all who are of all ages, join in living out the mission of this congregation to embrace freedom, to love inclusively, to grow in mind, body, and spirit, and to do our part for helping to heal the world. Part of that living out of the mission includes acknowledging those who are here before us. As we begin our service, we respect the peoples of the Peoria nation. Their ancestors welcomed and assisted the first Europeans in Peoria's traditional homeland, the very ground upon which we gather this morning. And today's message comes from the worship collaborative of Chicago area congregations that I was part of for this past summer. Uh, we'll be hearing from a recording of the Reverend Derek Jackson. He is our virtual minister in the pulpit today. Uh, and Reverend Derek is a gay man of African descent. He works with the Unitarian Universalist Ministers Association, and he recorded a greeting just for us. Good morning. I am the Reverend Derek Jackson, and I'm happy to lead the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria in worship today. I currently serve as the Director of Ministries for Lifelong Learning at the Unitarian Universalist Ministers Association, and as affiliated community minister at the Second Unitarian Church of Chicago. It is good that we can be virtually here together. that people can't hear very well. And I would really recommend, not that I've ever used them myself, but an assisted listening device. These worked with our previous sound system, and I've been told they work even better with our new enhanced sound system. And if you wear a hearing aid already, it's probably better to take it out and use one of these. If you need one, please raise your hand, and an usher will bring one to you. Hope that helps. I would just like to re-emphasize uh, that the trunk or treat for Families for Halloween is going to be next Saturday afternoon. And a few more trunks are needed. You can contact Amy Pop if you would like to do that and set up time is at 2.30 next Saturday the 23rd. Also next Saturday the 23rd, is an informal gathering for our dear friend and member, Beverly Miller, who died about uh, 10 days or two weeks ago, and they hadn't been able to be with us for a while, so some of the newer families may not know them. And we're gonna gather informally here in the sanctuary and tell Bev stories and remember Beverly. I was, uh, I volunteered to look for pictures for that that might have Beverly or Larry in them. And as I was going through the event photos on the church website, oh, my heart just soared with joy because of all the fun events we've had. Remember the barn dances and the auctions and the chili cook-offs? And I'm thinking, golly, we had fun. And we're going to do it again. Let's get this thing behind us and have some of those wonderful events again. 
All of the activities and the worship service and everything else at this church, including paying the light bill, is uh, paid for by our pledges and our offerings and a few fundraisers. So if you would like to leave an offering while you're here, there's a plate in the back at, at the end of the service. Or if you're at home, you can see a slide on how to donate digitally. Thank you. So I want to thank everybody who was part of our town hall conversation after service last Sunday. Uh, we had a, a great turnout for um, listening and talking about how the congregation has been handling um, living and being and continuing to be the church in the pandemic. Obviously, there's always a range of opinions, and I'm really glad that we had an opportunity to share some of that and to listen to each other. Now, one of the notes from, uh, from the town hall was how to add kind of maybe energy in the in-person experience of worship because you know, we just aren't singing all together yet. And wow, I don't know about you, but I am missing that just with so much of my heart. So we're still not quite singing. We're hoping to get there as soon as we possibly can. The Toward Live Church team is taking all those elements into consideration. But, but there is an opportunity to add a little bit of movement physical movement in as we gather in worship. Um, so I'm going to invite you, and just in case you were wondering, worship in this moment, in this time, is always something of a living experiment. It must always be a living expression of the congregation. And because we are human, we always have a chance to try something out and see where it takes us. In this moment, we're doing a little bit of that today, today's hymns. I appreciate the note that was raised during the town hall because it was already on my what to do next list in worship, so thank you. So today's hymns all have ways to kind of respond with our bodies. And I'm saying something at the beginning of each hymn in the course of the service. And I also want to invite folks to stand and move at any point during worship, especially during the hymns. We, we need to move in the ways that our bodies are called to. And I also recognize that each of us moves in our own way. Please, go at your own speed or comfort. For some of us, that may mean simply attending to our breathing or our heartbeat. That may be the movement that we can do, and we are all doing something together. Now, this first hymn has a fairly strong uh, drum beat, and so you are welcome to stand or sit or one or the other. I will invite you that legs and chest and arms and pews and hymnals all are good opportunities for a little bit of a beat. And perhaps try one and then switch for each verse as we go through the hymn. So now let us turn to our opening hymn, Sense of Life by Reverend Christopher Watkins Lamb. What do you see? What do you see? Take a look around and what do you see? Shapes and colors, shadow and light, everything that lies within your sight. Life is calling now, swirling round, rooting down. Life is calling now, inside out, sky and ground. Whoa, whoa. See life now, oh, oh, oh. see life now. What do you hear? What do you hear? All those sounds are moving through the air. Song and laughter, hopes and fears, everything that meets within your ear. Life is calling now, swirling round, rooting down. Life is calling now, inside out, sky and ground. 
What do you touch? What do you touch? Try to settle down and what do you touch? Earth beneath you blowing wind Everything that comes upon your skin Life is calling now Swirling round, rooting down Life is calling now Inside out, sky and ground Oh, oh, oh. Life now, whoa, whoa, feel life now. What do you taste? What do you taste? Focus inside, and oh, what do you taste? Fruits and veggies, egg foo young, everything that comes to touch your tongue. Life is Calling now, swirling round, rooting down. Life is calling now, inside out, sky and ground. Whoa, whoa, taste life now. Whoa, whoa, taste life now. What do you smell? What do you smell? Breathe in. Breathe out, and what do you smell? Baking cookies, blooming a rose, everything that moves to greet your nose. Life is calling now, swirling round, rooting down. Life is calling now, inside out, sky and ground. Oh, oh, oh. breathe life now. life now. Our opening comes from the Reverend Richard Gilbert. We meet on holy ground, brought into being as life encounters life, as personal histories merge into the communal story, as we take on the pride and pain of our companions, as we separate, as separate selves come into community. How desperate is our need for one another, our silent beckoning to our neighbors, our invitations to share life and death together our welcome into the lives of those we meet, and their welcome into our own. May our souls capture this treasured time, may our spirits celebrate our meeting, and in this time and in this pace, for we meet on holy ground. I'd like to welcome the Ordaz and Harold family up to help light our chalice as we listen to the chalice lighting from Reverend Derek Jackson. We light, we light this, this chalice, chalice in honor, in honor of, of stories. stories. Old, Old stories and, and new stories. Stories, stories of challenge, challenge and hope. hope. The, stories the stories that shape, that shape us. And the, and the stories that move, that move us forward. forward. And now we, off, we have our story from Amy Pop. Good morning. Today I share with you a story about a teller of stories. It is called 
The Storyteller by the Sea. The Storyteller by the Sea was known all around the world. Not many people had actually seen her because she lived on a far off island, but lots of people had heard about the amazing stories she told. Stories of danger and courage. Stories of deep soulful journeys. Stories of mystery and suspense. Stories so funny, people had to be given oxygen because they would laugh so hard they couldn't breathe. The storyteller, people said, could stop wars, make people fall in love, inspire great works of art just by telling stories. One time, a group of admirers came to visit her. They wanted to hear some of her amazing stories. So they traveled from all over the world to the island where the storyteller lived, to the spot on the beach where she told her stories each night, and they waited. When the sun finally began to set, the storyteller appeared with a thin man carrying a platter of fresh fruit slices. The storyteller sat on her mat, facing the sun in the water. She opened her mouth as if to speak, and then reached for a piece of pineapple. She chewed it thoughtfully and looked at the ocean. They all sat for a while, and then one of the travelers asked for one of the storyteller's wonderful stories. The storyteller sat for a moment, and then she leaned over and whispered in her assistant's ear. He nodded and said, The storyteller has so many stories that she doesn't know where to begin. Perhaps you have a suggestion or a request. Immediately, one of the travelers spoke about the storyteller's tale of two alligators and how they were captured from a Florida swamp by some college students and taken back to Minnesota in their backpacks and then escaped and ended up in the college president's hot tub and then the swim team's pool and suddenly the traveler was laughing so hard at the memory of the story that he couldn't even finish what he was saying. The storyteller laughed too, for she remembered that story. But when she opened her mouth to tell it, another traveler interrupted, asking for the story of the two young lovers from Thailand and then began to tell the story of how they had fallen in love at age 10, but had been married off to other people by their parents and had to live next door to each other their whole lives. She said, can you imagine never being able to kiss or hug or touch or even be alone together? My heart just breaks when I hear that story. It makes me want to love my husband and children better every time I hear it. It really changed my life. The storyteller nodded in understanding at the memory of that deeply powerful story. She opened her mouth to tell it, but another traveler interrupted by recalling another story about a girl in Argentina who wanted to be an airplane pilot so badly that she built her own airplane as a high school project and flew it over the mountains of Patagonia. A terrible storm came up and she crashed and had to travel back over the mountains all by herself. When she finally got home, she was so excited that she had achieved her goal though that the struggle back didn't even matter. Then he said, I can't believe that story. When I hear it, I think about how great it would be to be so devoted that you were willing to put everything you had into making something happen. I actually changed jobs because I was so inspired to try something that I really wanted to do. Then, an excited conversation broke out among the travelers. The storyteller listened to them talk of hearing stories and feeling their lives changed by them. Finally, one traveler said that he thought the most amazing story from the storyteller was the one that made people never see their enemies in the same way. 
the one that stopped wars. He shared that it was a story about two childhood friends who had been best friends, but grew up and grew apart. Eventually, they both got involved in politics and became leaders of rival groups. Things actually got so bad in the country that the two parties were about to go to war. The two friends met, each with a gun in their hand. It looked like war was going to start right then and there until one friend looked at the other and something strange happened. He saw his old friend shift and change from a wolf with fangs barred to an otter sliding down a riverbank to a mother leopard nursing her cubs. Then the friend became a child as he had been when they had first met. And then the divine spoke with the child's voice saying, I am you. And the man who was seeing this dropped his gun. And then so did his friend. The friends turned from each other to look at the crowd and God began to speak in one voice after another, the divine saying, I am you, I am you, I am you. Until it became a murmur that flowed over and throughout the whole crowd. The guns all clattered to the ground and the people reached out to each other and held hands with God's voice echoing through them. After the story, there was silence. The storyteller nodded, her eyes full of feeling. She remembered the story. It was one of the most important stories she had ever told. And after hearing it from the traveler, there really wasn't much more that she needed to say. So she sat, and the travelers gradually resumed their talking. Each story reminded them of another, and they talked and told stories and hugged and laughed and cried until the sky began to lighten. Then they all lay down and drifted off to sleep, so the birds began their morning songs. The storyteller looked at them, and she smiled. She stood up, gazing at the sleeping travelers, and murmured, I am you. And then she lay down next to them and fell asleep, too. Stories are for remembering. Stories are for sharing. Stories are for connecting with each other in this world. I am you. So may it always be. In their recessional, they will go off to the religious education program. I understand that today's program is about fire. Ooh, ooh. So let us let us enjoy. Go now in peace.
So music for meditation. From Jewish scholar and teacher, Abraham Heschel. Prayer cannot bring water to parched fields, nor mend a broken bridge, or rebuild a ruined city. But prayer can water an arid soul, mend a broken heart, and rebuild a weakened will. In this time, in the circle of the community, we restore and refresh our hearts our minds and our spirits with the sharing of our joys and sorrows. We begin with sorrow and remembrance. We offer our sympathy to Sonia Gravat as she mourns the recent loss of her dear pet companion, Flora. We have a note from uh, Lisa Nelson Rabe offering for the love and joy of Jane Nelson, Lisa's mother, who died this past week. We turn now to wishes for health. We send wishes for a complete and speedy recovery 
to Doris Rowland, mother of Sherry Schull, as Doris recovers from a fall and subsequent surgery. And Mary Mahalan Kafar asks for prayers for her dear friend Connie, as she has spinal surgery on Monday, um, as a friend's mother-in-law, Gail. And we also have a joy for, uh, from the Ordaz and Harold family for their grandson Lachlan's complete recovery from COVID. We also have a note from our larger world. This past Friday included a second deadly bombing that targeted religious minorities in Afghanistan. Dozens of people were killed when bombs went off during prayers on Friday. And this particular mosque included people from multiple uh, religious minorities. And that bombing follows the bombing from the previous Friday at a Shiite mosque, where again, dozens of people killed and many injured. We offer our sorrow for these losses for this violence and this violation of sacred time and space. We offer our prayers for recovery, and we offer our solidarity to those who bear the impact of these terrorist actions and oppress religious minorities. Knowing there is so much more in our minds and on our hearts than we can possibly share in any one moment, I invite you to join me in a time of quiet as I light candles for all the joys, the sorrows, the names and the milestones that live in our hearts and remain unspoken. Amen, shalom, salam, and blessed be. And now let us turn to our reading for this moment. It is offered from the Reverend Derek Jackson. The Stories We Tell by Chris Bateman. Our lives are shaped and guided by the stories we tell about ourselves. There are the stories that you tell about yourself, your self-image, which dictate what you can bring yourself to do or attempt. There are the stories you tell about others, innocent gossip, news and chatter, or pernicious slander prejudice and defamation. There are stories we tell of the interpretation of observations, 
which go by the misleading terms facts and knowledge. In stories we tell of what cannot be observed or tested, ineffable beliefs, which philosophers term metaphysics. The metaphysical stories that we tell lie at the heart of who we are, both as individuals and as cultures. It is easy to make the mistake of believing you don't tell such stories, that they are a thing of the past and anyone who believes in untestable stories is somehow deficient. But even this is a metaphysical story that distorts our perspective. If we are to mock those who have faith in an immortal afterlife, or who believe in the power of a transcendent force to save us, must we not also mock those who have faith in science to grant them immortality? Or believe that technological process will save us, even while our environment rots under the resource gluttony facilitated by the equipment we have already engineered? The thing with a glass house is that they are hard to see, especially when you are focused upon hefting your stones. There is a malicious tendency that all humans possess, to some degree, which fools us into believing that the way to solve problems is to convince other people that their stories are wrong and our stories are right. But changing the stories we tell about ourselves transpires to be exceedingly difficult, except when a crisis awakens that potential within us. Effort exhausted on attempts at conversion, no matter the stories being told, are counterproductive. They hurt the reputation of whichever culture the stories being forced upon others belong to regardless of whether that culture is a traditional religion or progressive liberalism. Once we accept freedom of belief, the right of each and every one of us to be the sole determinant of the stories we tell, the problems facing the world become very different. The crises become far more tractable than if we insist on believing the demon that whispers, Everyone will be better when we and everyone tells the stories as you. Then the challenge becomes finding those stories that are compatible with the tales people already tell about themselves, those which allow us to agree upon the problems that need addressing and thus apply solutions. The stories we tell are fundamental to who we are but they are also elemental to what we can achieve. One story told in an appropriate fashion and couched in language viable to its audience can change the world. Indeed, there are many such stories which have already changed the world. Zarathustra or Plato's stories of good and evil as absolutes. Buddha, or Jesus' as stories of universal love, Darwin's stories of descent with modification, Nietzsche's and Kierkegaard's stories of reality as interpretation, Einstein's stories of longevity or rel relativity. The question we face in trying to get to grips with our existence appears to us all too often as which stories are true? Yet truth in this sense means little more than assessing compatibility with the stories you have already accepted. Instead, I suggest the question, which stories shall we tell? So I want to invite you, uh, if you are, whether you are in person or whether you are on Zoom or Facebook, to rise and body your spirit.
because this is one of the hymns that we can actually do a little bit of movement if you wish. This is Meditation on Breathing from Sarah Dan Jones, and I will offer, I will be at the pulpit offering a little bit of that inviting movement. This is not uh, American Sign Language, this is not any formal idea, this is simply interpretive response to the music. Uh, for example, with meditation on breathing, it is, when I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. So I invite you to rise and body your spirit, whether you are in person or on the screen. And you are welcome to follow along with movement as I'm offering, come up with your own. But meditation on breathing is a really good opportunity to simply respond. Let us begin. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, in the beginning. So what happened was, these are all the beginnings of stories. The beginnings of moments of sharing that signify to us to listen that something is coming, something to listen to. Our ears get perked up and we pay attention to what comes next. Stories. In a very simplistic way, Stories are just events linked in sequence across time according to a plot. Linked in sequence across time according to a plot. So in essence, story is just a collection of things that have happened that are just put together to make, in some particular order, in order to make sense of what happened. 
to shape a narrative. And it's something that we do often, we do all the time. Our, our lives are full of stories. We learn from uh, very young to tell stories, to listen for stories. One of the first things we do with children is read a story. And then as they keep reading the story and we tell stories, that they learn to tell stories and read stories on their own. And we become full of stories. We are creatures of story. And some of the stories that we have are ones that we create, and some are stories that have been given to us, that have shaped us in a particular way. They don't represent maybe our inner understanding, but they represent kind of the expectations or what other people think of us, the outer world's impressions upon us. It's so easy to be shaped by story, to listen, because because we are so attuned to story, to listen to the narratives that are woven around us that create us in a way or at least to allow ourselves to be created. And if we are so dependent upon story, if really so much of our identity and our understanding of ourselves is grounded in story, then we can change ourselves by changing our story. We can redefine who we are by changing our story. In seminary, I took a class on narrative therapy, which is just that, recognizing that we are part of the stories that we tell and that we are working on some a particular issue, one of the ways that we can engage that issue is to re-evaluate the story that we tell about it. This isn't about creating fiction, though using some fiction tropes might help in creating the narrative but it's about re-understanding how the events that have happened to us fit together. You know, as I said, that stories are events linked in sequence or across time according to a plot. If we took those events and put them in a different sequence or added a different narrative, to those events, you would have a different story. And what power there can be in creating a new story, or maybe even reclaiming a story that we had forgotten or had been hidden from us. When I was in elementary school, I loved to sing. I would sing all the time, and I sang in the church choir, um, the children's choir at church, and, uh, and I, at school, when there was opportunities to sing, I loved to sing. I took advantage of every opportunity to sing. And then at some point, and I don't remember exactly when. I think it must have been around middle school. 
I told myself, or at least someone may have told me, but I developed the story that I could not sing. And so I stopped singing, well, at least publicly. I did still sing at home, listening to my music, dancing, you know, in my bedroom. But I didn't join choirs or participate in public singing. We may be singing along in the church because we all sang, but I had this new narrative that I could not sing. And in some ways, I almost forgot about the fact that I used to sing. And this narrative carried with me through high school and through college. And it wasn't until I was in my early 20s and I was... Uh, listening to an LGBT gospel choir in Boston and loving the music and seeing a space where I could reconnect with that music in a place that accepted me as, as I am, that I wanted to sing again. And they announced at the end of this concert that, you know, they accepted people to come as they are to sing. And I didn't join right away. And I, it was at the second, after the second concert when, that I attended that I made the step into singing. And I sang. And no one flinched hearing my voice. And in fact, someone actually said, you have a nice voice, which I didn't expect because that was not within my narrative. And through that choir, I reclaimed my singing voice and I began to sing again. And then in singing, uh, I joined the UU Church because of that choir, in fact, and I sang in the choir. And then as a theater person, I was doing a play and then ended up doing musicals. And singing became so much a part of who I am again. And I remembered the story of me singing when I was young, which through all those times of high school and college, I had forgotten. It got hidden in my narrative. And now I tell a new story, not of a story of not singing, but a story of singing being such an integral part of me since I was a child that I lost for a time and reclaimed. The events that happened in my life are the same, but I have a new narrative to weave them together. I found a new story and I'm so grateful for it. And not only do we as individuals have stories? Communities have stories. Congregations have stories. Families have stories. And in these groups too, we have to think about what are the stories we tell? What are the events that we lift up that we weave together. I wonder for you, what are the stories you tell about your family, your community, or your congregation? 
What stories exist? What are the stories that have led you to be the congregation you are? What stories might lead you to be the congregation you wish to be? Maybe the seeds are there. We just have to find the new story. One thing I find as I talk with people about story is that often as individuals, we tell stories that show kind of where we are lacking, what we are missing. We can easily fall into the stories that show us not in our true light in many ways doesn't bring ourselves to our full perspective. And it, what I find in community stories that often the story stays in the aspirational. The story lives in the where you want to be, but doesn't name where you are at the moment. I see this happening in congregations that I visit. Many congregations uh, have in on their website and in the order service even, or there are many different places talk about their openness, talk about how welcoming they are. Everyone is welcome. And they have the story about how they are this wonderful, open, welcome, welcoming place. As I have attended some of these congregations, they're not as welcoming or open as they might think they are. There are areas that are inaccessible to people of differing abilities that you can attend a church and have no one talk to you as a new person and feel isolated. That the community doesn't reach out or connect or spend the energy to welcome you. And so you're not sure if you want to come back. And so, yes, you may be open, but there's still work to do. In some places I've been to, I may have shared a little bit about my experience and weren't really ready to hear critique because this didn't fit into the story that they told. So they weren't ready to hear a new story. And so I, I wonder how we think about stories that we tell as a group and what stories we could tell that may be hit toward the aspiration but grounds us in who we are right now. And then there are the stories that are not shared, the stories that we don't know about. As I've been doing my own family history, I've been uncovering people and stories and events that were not told to me, that were not passed down generation to generation. Stories that have almost been lost. And I think about what would happen if we never had these stories, stories of courage and strength, of adventure that are within our family. But no one knows about it. 
And so I am becoming a keeper of these stories and not even a keeper, a teller of these stories. Because the stories do not need to be kept. They need to be told and shared and passed on. And so I wonder what stories are not told, whose story is not shared in your congregation, in your community, who's missing? What stories need to be unearthed and revitalized that might help shift and change the narratives we tell about ourselves? I invite you to think about your stories and think about your collective stories as a congregation. Do we really tell the stories we want to tell? Are we missing any stories? What stories could we live into? And so I close this part of our story together. And although I cannot guarantee you a happily ever after, I do wish that for each and every one of you. Blessed be. I invite you to rise in body or spirit for our closing hymn. And this one is, like the previous hymn, is dynamic because it is made for two voices. And certainly I want to invite you to clap along with the hymn. This is Now Let Us Sing. But there is also a particular signature clap in this song, if you have not done this. Towards the end of it, uh, for example, say the first verse would be, sing to the power of the faith within. So it's sing to the power of the faith within. I think we can do this. I think we can. So let me invite you to rise and body your spirit. And if you are in person or out in the ether, we can take up into, take up in this hymn. Now let us sing and watch me for the clap. If you don't clap any place else, but of course you may. Let us begin with now let us sing. Lift up your voice, be not afraid. Now let us sing to the power of the hope within. Now let us sing, 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 sing. Now let us sing, 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 sing. Lift up your voice, be not afraid. Now let us sing to the power of the love within. Now let us sing, 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 sing. Now let us sing. Sing, sing, lift up your voice, be not afraid. Now let us sing to the power of the joy within.
My friends, we are a people of story. May we tell the stories that give us purpose. May we revise the stories that limit us. And may we reclaim the stories of the lost voices. Blessed be. Let us go forth. Our worship is ended. Let our service and our songs and our stories begin. <laughs>